Thank, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, the, the term jaw-dropping is, is perhaps overused around here these days, um, but not today. The, the auditors may speak in very calm and measured tones, as professionals do, but their comments were, were truly jaw-dropping. What, what they said to us was that as the largest metropolitan authority in Europe, we do not have a functioning system of account. We do not know how much money we have. We do not know how much we owe or how much is owed to us. That's a situation that would embarrass a corner shop. Right. You know, one of, the, one of the cornerstones of a good accounting system is being able to reconcile your bank account, by which I mean that you confirm that the amount of money that you think you have is the same as what the bank thinks you have. And if you combine that with reconciling the other two key control accounts, the sales and purchase ledgers, you confirm that the bank agrees with how much money you've got, and you confirm that those people that you owe money to agree how much is owed, and those that owe money to you agree how much is owed. We're a million miles from being able to do that. The officers told me that we last reconciled the bank in February. <coughs> now, we should be doing this in these circumstances, probably daily, maybe weekly, but not annually, that's for sure. It, it's just jaw-dropping. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Moreover, we have 30 people, get this, 30 people manually allocating cash, a, a process that... In, in probably anything other than the smallest company would these days be done largely automatically. We are doing a process manually where there are thousands and thousands of cash transactions every week. I mean, we've got 30 people on it. The auditors told me it's still getting worse, implication being maybe we need more than 40 people. I, I don't, 30 people, I don't know how many we need. But there comes a point where you just simply can't add more manual resource to the process because they start getting in each other's way. It, it's, it's astonishing, isn't it? I take Councillor Harmer's analogy about us being a, a ship on the ocean in the fog, and all that's right, we're certainly lost and we're certainly in the fog, but one thing you're wrong about, we're not adrift. Right? You know, we, we are going full steam, racking up overheads, and we are going full steam through the fog, and we don't know where the cliff is. Okay? It's, you know, it, it, it's just as bad as it gets, really. And, and also, you know, what, what we've been talking about today is not solving equal pay, but we've been talking about agreeing a methodology by which we're going to approach it. So I'm not sure if a deal's been done or not. I think we're all fairly confused about that. But let's assume at some point in the next 20 days we agree on a methodology. We then have to go forward and find a way that we can take all these disparate job functions, pay them differently according to market rates, and somehow squeeze it or contrive it into a job evaluation process that gives us protection from this crazy 2010 Equality Act that was one of the acts of the Diane Blair administration. So we are a long way from solving it. In the end, the value of a job will be determined by the market, not by what we say it's worth. And we have to find a way of paying market rates within the constraints of the law that is imposed upon us. And even now, I've got here, Lord Mayor, the deal that we've been discussing all afternoon. And it says, it will be completed by April 25, but get this, what's been added, get this, so long as it can be delivered by that date without compromising the integrity of the work. Now that to me right, looks like a gap through which you could drive a coach and horses. So even if this is a deal, right, there's a let out in there for the unions who have a strong financial incentive to keep this process going as long as they can. Time. Thank you. I call the Constitution to take it.